Hey there, guys. All right, today we are back with some more Sam O'Nella Academy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to expect here in the obscure units of measurement. Um, how he'll spin this to be? It's obscure units. Uh, it's probably gonna be super fucked up. Uh, he's, he's probably gonna be like, uh, the length of three gor severed gorilla arms. That's gonna be one of his obscure units. I'm. Before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I would love if you join the Discord and follow me over at Twitch. By the time this goes live, actually, I think the day this goes live, uh, if I am doing the math in my head right, no, oh shit, I think the vi this video will go live Friday, August 4th. Damn. I've, I'll, I'll probably be playing a little bit of uh, Baldur's Gate 3 in the afternoon shortly after this is uploaded after. They usually have lunch around the time that I upload these videos. But after I've eaten, and after this is uploaded, I'll be playing Baldur's Gate 3 for a little bit in the afternoon. You should watch. Give it a little view. Please. Let's dive in. <laughs> Hey kids, I've hey been told by a lot of people that there's nothing more exciting than the metric system. So he's been told by one person. They may have a point, but I can still prove them wrong. Today, we're going to talk about some specific lesser known units of measurement. First is the Schmidt Pain Index. Now, anybody could. Oh, this is what he means by measurement tell you that getting stung by a bug tends to hurt. But just how much does one sting hurt compared to another? Are yellow jackets worse than hornets? Are fire ants worse than honeybees? Nobody in the world of science knew for sure. That is, until a young upstart by the name of Justin Schmidt decided to boldly go where no entomologist has gone before. But how did he plan to quantify the level of pain caused by different insect stings? Well, it went something like this. Alright, honeybee. Z Ow, god, that hurt. I'll give that like a two. Next paper wasp okay that's like a three next let's try bullet ant jesus christ mary mother of satan's left nipple it's like my hand is made entirely out of urethras and each and every one is having a red hot catheter put in and ripped out five times every second my very being is on fire my only desire left is for death himself to bless me with sweet relief i'll give that a four Y'all, if you've not watched um, Brave Wilderness, I think it is. I'm sure everyone's seen this uh, that watches. Uh, but Coyote Peterson went through the Schmidt Pain Index. And I miss that series. I wish there were more animals for him to get stung by. Because it was pretty entertaining. Along with being fairly educational. Not the most, like, educational, you know. I mean, also, I stay inside a lot. I'm not going to go to the places that Coyote Peterson goes, so... We're also not related. I don't think we are. No. Four plus. In all seriousness, though, I'm pretty sure the index is meant to be logarithmic, like earthquake magnitudes. So just like a magnitude 7 earthquake is 10 times as powerful as a magnitude 6, a bullet ant sting causes 100 times as much pain as a honeybee. In total, Schmidt catalogs 78 different species of the order Hymenoptera, which includes ants, bees, and wasps. You can tell a man is really dedicated to his job when, after getting stung by 77 insects, he says to himself, you know what? That wasn't enough. I need one more creature to inject its venom into me, and only then will this list be complete. I guess you could say, he just really gave a schmidt. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Next is the Waffle House Index. Oh, so no. for those of you that didn't know, the Waffle House is one of the most resilient establishments I've heard this index before. I can't remember the specifics, but I know I've heard it. ...in the world. Whereas most restaurants would simply close down in the event of, say, a hurricane, Waffle House just goes from their normal mode to disaster response mode, following extensive protocol that allows that location to keep serving customers in spite of low food supply or even a power outage. In response to this business practice, FEMA came up with what is known as the Waffle House Index, which is a system to easily assess- What makes it better is that a government property made this index. 
assess how badly an area is damaged by a natural catastrophe. If the Waffle House is fully open, they're in the green, which means things are basically fine. If the Waffle House is using their low supply menu, you're in the yellow, which means that the area is almost certainly mid-disaster. Finally, if you're in the red, that means the Waffle House is either closed or gone. Now that's a sign of some real nuclear zombie holocaust type shit going down, so if you're not already dead, you should probably vacate the area. Most engineers could tell you that, structurally speaking, the triangle is the strongest of all shapes. But I believe that there's one shape that's even stronger. Godspeed, Waffle House. Next we have the APGAR score. So the APGAR score is a rating system used by hospitals to determine how healthy a newborn baby is on a scale from 0 to 10. It's called APGAR based on its five criteria which include appearance, pulse, grimace, activity, and respiration. And each of these is rated on a scale from 0 to 2 to get your final score. Personally, I think this set of standards is a little flawed. Here's an example. Well, it's completely blue, and it doesn't really want to move at all, but it's got a really fast heartbeat, and it's screaming really loudly. I'd give this baby like a 6 out of 10. That's good enough. So in response, I've invented my own rating system. It's called the RAGU score. R is for reflexes. It's common knowledge that if you hold any healthy baby by its feet and then drop it, it'll always land upright. If your baby can't do that, that's a sure sign that it's defective. A is for abnormality. If your baby seems weird, that's typically a good indicator that it's weird. G still stands for grim- uh, no. Just like in the APGAR test, only instead of looking at the baby's facial expression, you just bring Grimace from McDonald's into the room and see how the baby reacts. If it starts crying, that's a good sign, because Grimace is absolutely fucking terrifying. And yeah. finally, U is for ugliness, just because that might sway your decision on whether or not you want to keep it. Now, if the baby passes the test, it gets to go home, but if it fails, then it gets shipped off to the factory and made into ragu, hence One saucy fucking saw. So I agree with this with this proposed plan. It's the name of the test. Some people might be upset by this fact, but you know what they say: pray go today, ragu tomorrow. Anyway, that's no. That's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. I wish I could say thank you for the video, but. I'm traumatized again, Sam. Not really. This is still not the most traumatizing thing Sam has made. Um, but that was the Obscure Units of Measurement by Sam O'Nella. Um, I've got nothing else to say. What, what do you even say after, after Ragu today, Ragu tomorrow? I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.